What's up? This is Richie and Jamie from the Where We Wild YouTube channel and today we're going to talk about the top 10 camping mistakes that a lot of beginners make so you don't make them. Let's get into it. Number one, not testing out your gear before you go camping. This happens all the time. We see this all the time. A lot of first timers will buy all kinds of brand new gear and the first time they open the package of it is at the campsite. <laughs> you don't know if the tent came with missing poles. You don't know if your air mattress leaks. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So make sure you give everything a little test run at home in the comforts of your own home. Set up the tent in the backyard, in your living room. The last thing you want is to get out there and find out that you're screwed. I, we can't set up the tent. What are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. We just drove five hours and we don't have a tent. All your gear, just check out before you bring it out to the wilderness because that'll ruin your trip real fast. Yeah, you'd, you'd be going home very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. I'd much rather have the argument and, and also <laughs> learn how to set up your tent. Right. You know what I mean? I was just thinking like, I'd much rather argue about that in the comfort of home. Like, where does this pole go? Right. I don't understand this. <laughs> rather than being out in the middle of the woods trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So test everything out before you, you go and depend on it in the wild. Yeah. That's huge. Number two, not organizing your gear. It is probably the most frustrating thing to get to the campsite and not know where anything is. <laughs> and our solution to that is getting some bins. Mm -hmm. We have three bins that we've organized by kitchen, sleeping, and then miscellaneous gear. If it doesn't fit in the bin, it's not going with us. And those three bins are all we take yeah. besides our tent. For the most part, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll, I'm notorious for overpacking yeah. right here. <laughs> I always want to test out new stuff. I'm always playing around with different things and uh, I want to bring fishing gear and I want to bring this and that and this new knife and this and that and, and uh, it can get out of control. But she's always like, if it's not in the bin, if it's not fitting in the bin, it's not coming. <laughs> That's the thing about having those bins is all your little stuff that you're going to use. Instead of having that stuff just thrown all over the car and you're searching up and down and just losing your mind, you, you know where all that stuff is. It's very dialed in. It just makes life so much easier. You just check your inventory every once in a while. If you go camping a lot, just make sure you have you know what's in there mm -hmm. and that's it man you just grab those bins and hit the road jack yep some things like your tent your sleeping bag your cooler those are extra you're not going to fit those in in the bins but right. everything else man all your little stuff you should have an inventory just take it every once in a while know what's in there and you're gone dude those yep. three bins hit the road jack yep yeah that's good stuff <laughs> man we'll link those bins by the way in the description I think we got ours at Home Depot. We did. And they were fairly cheap, $10, $15 mm -hmm. each. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to find those. Maybe I can find them on Amazon too. Speaking of, we just started our own Amazon store. Yes. Pretty awesome. And that too is very organized. It is, thank you to her. <laughs> she organized it mostly. Um, but yeah, you can check out our Amazon store that we just started up. It's all our favorite camping gear, all our favorite products for camping, fishing, hiking, survival, mm -hmm. pretty much all kinds of stuff. We're adding to it, you know, as we go, it's kind of hard to think of everything right off the top, yeah. but we're adding a lot, you know, daily. So definitely it's check really it out. Cool. It we're is proud cool. Of it. it is cool. Check it out. Uh, the link is in the description, but when you buy some of that gear, Make sure it's organized mm -hmm. because the last thing you want is to get out there and not have a clue where anything is. Yeah. It just makes it so much less stressful when you just don't even have to think it's in this bin. I know it's in there. Yep. And if it's not in there, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. You didn't bring it. Exactly. There's no searching. So organize your stuff. Number three, not checking the weather. That is a huge mistake and it goes overlooked. I've seen so many people that I've personally gone camping with not bring the right jacket, not bring the right tent, not bring this or that because they didn't check the weather. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, it's crazy to me. You have to check the weather. Yeah. You get out there, you better know if any rain is in the forecast. You better know how cold it's gonna get at night. You gotta know how hot it's gonna be during the day. If it's gonna be super windy, just check that weather, man, because the last thing you wanna do is show up and not have a clue. Every environment's different. You go up into elevation, it's way colder. Right. Rain can come on like this. You gotta know this stuff, man. It's a very simple mistake, but it's a very common mistake. So just fire up that old iPhone of yours yeah. <laughs> and check the weather, man. And speaking of weather, number four, not bringing the right clothes. Big mistake. Big mistake. 
Um, you want to make sure, especially if you're going up in elevation and it's going to get really cold at night, you want to make sure you have clothes that are warm. I know here in the middle of the summer, it's 80 degrees at the bottom of the mountain. You go up to the top and it's 60. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you have the clothes that are going to keep you the warmest, especially at night um, once there's no sun. Yeah, or the driest. Or the driest. You know, if rain comes on, you don't have a rain jacket, man. It goes hand in hand. Check the weather and because of that report yeah bring the right clothes right it's you know you're gonna need that thicker jacket you're gonna need that extra pair of socks you're gonna need a rain jacket that's mm -hmm. completely waterproof whatever it is so that way you can make sure you're comfortable there's nothing worse man no there than really not isn't. than being like out there and knowing that that jacket that you need is hanging on the hook yeah. in your <laughs> closet and you know exactly where it is and you're freezing right um but the other thing too i just want to throw into this is dressing too warm mm, which yeah. happens the last thing you want to do is sweat when it's cold out and i've done this man like my instinct told me and your instincts are going to tell you too bundle up it's freezing you know and so you you throw on your long johns your jacket your hoodie your hat this that two pairs of socks you're just completely bundled up till it's like i can't put my arms down <laughs> um and you get in your sleeping bag and at first you're like all right i'm warm blah 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 but couple minutes goes by half hour goes by you start to sweat because you have so much stuff on and you start to sweat when it's cold you're gonna be freezing cold shivering god there's nothing worse it's, it's dangerous oh yeah you can get hypothermia mm -hmm. for sure but it, there's nothing more uncomfortable than being wet and cold like sweating under your armpits and it being freezing i don't know if you know that feeling but Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it's bad. So just start with a base layer, shorts, t-shirt, pants, t-shirt, whatever it is, mm -hmm. just your basic, and then decide, all right, I could I could use the hoodie. I mm -hmm. could use the uh, the jacket, whatever, the extra pair of socks, long johns, whatever it is, but just don't go backwards. Don't start completely bundled up because the last thing you want to do is start sweating, man. Exactly. But at least you have it. Right. If you didn't bring it, you don't even have the choice. Yeah. So bring the right clothes, definitely. Number five, not picking the right campsite. This is huge, man. This is a big, big mistake that a lot of people make when they first get started because they just simply don't have the experience to know what to look out for. Mm -hmm. Do you have enough shade? Are you too close to the bathroom? Is the ground level enough? Are there dangerous branches up in the tree above you? There's so many different factors. We actually just made a video recently called how to pick the best campsite at a campground. If you haven't checked that out, we'll link it at the end of this video. Definitely watch that, man, because uh, it's just a big, big deal. There are, are a lot of little things that uh, just, like I said, come with experience that we've, you know, mistakes we've made in, in picking a campsite that, you know, we've learned to uh, avoid, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So make sure you pick a really good campsite. Sometimes you're just gonna kind of get stuck with one that's not so great. Yeah. Right? It's first come, first, first serve. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, it's just, you make the best of it. But if you have the power beforehand to just check everything out, whether it be online or in person or whatever, do your very best to know what to look for and to pick a good campsite because that can really just make or break your trip. Number six, arriving to the campground too late. The last thing you want to do is set up your campsite in the dark. Sure. We've done it. It's not fun. Get your car packed early in the morning get on the road as soon as you can and get to that campsite an hour early. Even, they'll probably let you in. Yeah, I was just gonna say, they'll let you in even earlier sometimes. Yeah, um, if there's no one there from the night before or if they've left already, they'll just let you go in and start setting up. Right. Get your campsite set up, get everything ready for dinner, start cooking before sunset. Yeah, you wanna be ready to roll by the time that sun dips, man. Mm -hmm. You wanna have dinner cooking, you wanna have that hammock set up, your mm -hmm. tent, whatever you got, right. you wanna be ready to relax by the time that, that sun goes down. Yeah. Cause that's just tough, man. I mean, and this actually goes back to testing out your gear. Mm -hmm. It's way easier to set up if you have to in the dark. Sometimes you're forced to. Yeah. We've done it, you know, long road trips. We didn't know where we were gonna stay. I can't, we can't drive anymore. We gotta find a place to go. And it was getting dark. By the time we found that campsite, we drove into the campground, all this stuff. It was dark, man, and we're setting up with headlamps, this and that. And on that trip, it was a brand new tent. We yes. went to Walmart first and That's had right. to buy a tent. That's right. So that could have come with, you know, a missing pole, mm -hmm. this and that, blah, blah, blah. So knowing your gear, going back to that, testing out your stuff. If you're forced to sit up in the dark, you better know your gear. Right, I mean, exactly. that was crazy. I mean, we got lucky there. We really did. Yeah. And speaking of fast setup, if everything's in bins, 
you're ha yeah. you're halfway there. Yeah. You can just open your bins, pull everything out, you're done. Yeah, a lot of these go hand in hand, man. Mm -hmm. And it helps if if you know by some chance you were forced to to you know do certain things like set up in the dark yeah. and you know setting up with the headlamps on and and the you know the bugs are attracted to your headlamp so and bad. you're sweating yeah. and it's I mean we've been there, dude. Yeah, we've been. That's there. why this is part of this list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely <laughs> so. get there, get there an hour or two early, man. Yeah. Get in there and get your stuff set up before that sun hits the horizon. Exactly. Well, and the earlier that you're set up, the longer you can relax, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to a hotel. You can't just plop your bag down and call it a day. Mm -hmm. You've got to make your house. Yeah, so pretty much. The faster yeah. you can do that, the better. So get there nice and early, kids. <laughs> that was crazy. That made me think of that story. That was wild. I know, that was crazy. It's a good time though. It was. Number seven, not overlapping your ground tarp. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We always talk about having that base layer underneath your tent, right? That ground tarp, it protects your tent from rocks and sticks and, and you know dampness and gives you another layer of separation. But if you have any of that tarp sticking out from underneath your tent, if it comes on to rain, man, that water's gonna come down, hit that tarp, and just pull it right underneath your tent. And then you're soaked and miserable. So just make sure that every corner of your tent is stretched out far enough to cover that tarp. If the tarp is too big, you fold it to the right size, do what you gotta do, but make sure that that tent overlaps all of that tarp, mm -hmm. or it's just a rain catch, man. That's all it is. So very simple, but very big mistake to make and avoid. Overlap that tarp, baby. Number eight, not opening up the windows of your tent. Keeping them closed all night is a bad, bad mistake. Just from your breath alone, your tent is gonna fill up with condensation, it's gonna get super humid, and even when it's cold out, you know, your instinct is gonna say, close the windows, it's freezing, but at least keep them cracked. You wanna keep a nice airflow blowing through your tent at all times. If it's hot out, that's obvious, that's an obvious choice. You always want a nice breeze blowing through, but it's tricky when it's cold out. Like I said, I mean, you're really going to feel like you need to close everything up. You're freezing cold. It's really, really cold. But if you're dressed properly, I'd much rather have some cold, fresh air blowing through than everything building up condensation and humidity inside the tent, making you wake up damp mm. and cold. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a little chilly, I mean, you shouldn't be if you got the right bag, you got the right clothes, you knew what that weather was saying, this and that and everything you're prepared. But, ugh, wet, damp. It's the worst. Absolute worst. So <laughs> keep those windows open all the time. Even just keep them cracked. Uh, and that makes a big difference and, and just keeps that condensation and humidity level down. Mm -hmm. You're going to be much, much more comfortable because of it. Number nine, leaving the tent door open. Big no-no. Big no no. It's such an easy mistake to make, it but is. every single time you enter and exit that tent, get in the habit of closing that door. The last thing you want is all of the bugs waiting for you for when you go to sleep that night. Um, Once they're in there, they're in there, man. Yeah. The, and it takes about a millisecond of that <laughs> door being open, especially if you got a lantern on in there right. or something like that that's attracting them mosquitoes, flies, moths, whatever. Yeah. They're in there, dude. Yeah. You know, you, it's so easy. You, know, you it's jump so out, easy. oh, I gotta go grab my, you know, whatever jacket mm -hmm. or this or that. And, and just in that time that you run to the car or back or wherever you gotta go over to the campfire, whatever it is, they're in there, dude. It's, yep. it's, it's, it's not fun to no. have, have uh, no. bugs in your tent. You're going to zip and unzip that yeah. thing a hundred thousand times in a single camp trip. I can trip. hear it. Yeah. I can literally <laughs> hear it. I hear it. It's like so loud too. Yeah. It, it's just... <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's, you just have to get into the habit. It's going to happen every time. And it's twice every time how'd you go, do it. How'd it go? <laughs> 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 it's a good impression. <laughs> um, yeah, That's so. Funny. Yeah, dude, close the door. Close the door. <laughs> you wouldn't leave your front door open at home, would you? Right? It's true. So just, just keep that shut as much as possible. You don't, it's, they all get in around the top there, around Ugh. the lantern. Yeah. You hear them buzzing. Yeah, You've done it's, it. it's you bad. You can't get them out either. No, it's you can't. It's insane. You can't. So keep that door shut. That's a good one for sure. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I was almost crying. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, number 10, leaving food out all over your campsite. Mm. This is a massive mistake and it happens all the time. Don't leave food out, it's that simple. Pick up after yourself, it's that simple. I mean, 
you're pretty much ringing the dinner bell for bears and any other animals to come in if you're leaving stuff all over the place. You're cooking dinner, fill up a trash bag, get it going, get it out, right to the dumpster before you go inside that tent. You roast the marshmallows, pick up those gooey sticks, get them to the dumpster before you go inside that tent. And speaking of your tent, never, never bring food inside your tent. Never. Especially in like bear country, like you're asking for it, man. You got kids or whatever, I know it's tempting to you know have that little snack inside the tent or whatever but you know you better be very very careful with that because it, it can be very very dangerous absolutely you know we've seen it and and there's a reason that those bears and, and other animals are hanging around that campground to begin with mm -hmm. because they know that certain people are leaving stuff out for them all the time and they can count on that easy meal that's why they're there so don't be one of those people that leaves a mess all over the campsite just make sure everything's put away, everything's clean, there's no food containers open, anything like that, locked up, secure, or thrown out. And then obviously, whether you're camping, hiking, or fishing, anything in the outdoors, leave no trace. It's that simple. It really is. Just <laughs> you hike it in, you hike it out, pick up after yourself. That's it. So those are 10 big mistakes that a lot of people make when they first start out camping. And you know, a lot of them are very easy to make some of them are you know common sense check the weather don't leave food out but if you're you're first starting out you know we've made some of these mistakes we, have. we made a lot of these mistakes yep so hopefully you guys got some good info out of this and, and hopefully it'll help you avoid making some of these big mistakes and and help your next camping trip be a much better one because of it if you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like and if you're into this sort of thing don't forget to hit subscribe we put a new video out every single week thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time later If you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to check out the rest of the Where We Wild YouTube channel, where we post a brand new video every week. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever we post a new adventure. Thanks for watching. See ya.